So there's a lot of stuff uh, going on in the States uh, that's kind of interesting to me. Around, it's all around immigration. And uh, one of the, well, let's start with the first uh, outstanding thing. Um, the new, whatever his thing, look, Donald Trump put somebody in the thing for house urban development or something like that, I don't know, whatever those cameras did. I'll tell you that story one time when was, I met one of these guys in the, in the 70s and then he was a black guy uh, and it was very interesting, uh, you know. Anyway, this guy basically uh, equated uh, uh, chattel slavery, you know, the, for people from the middle past of chattel slavery of North America with immigration to North America. And he had to walk those, those things back because he said they were equal, this, this whole immigration thing. Also, this immigration thing, uh, and this just started me thinking, uh, because this whole uh, thing uh, that they're doing with the immigration is about taking people who are not legal or broke law, whatever, having them kicking them out of the country, and they're breaking up families, whatever have you. And one case that just came up uh, was, uh, I don't want to mention any name, just, it doesn't matter what face is on it, this, this, this principle is the same. I think it was a 13 year old girl, whatever, how she was. Um, um, she was uh, some some child. Uh, the the father um, who was hailed from um, the lineage from Mexico I was taking his two daughters uh, to school. The wife was in the car also. Uh, that's an intact family. And when he delivered the first child to the uh, to the school, uh, he had a truck or something like that. Because he works in a restaurant. Um, and he's been working in a restaurant for like so it's for like 25 years, something like that. So like, that means like 1990. 1991, whenever he, uh, whenever it was, uh, uh, he, uh, 1999, uh, whenever he came, uh, no, 1990, doesn't matter, you do the math. Uh, so he's been working in this state for that long. He came in uh, illegally, and of course the children were born in the states. Um, um, so he has all that going for him, but the, the, uh, the, the, the immigration people, they picked him up and they're going to put him in jail to deport him. The, uh, the, the little girl starts crying, whatever it actually takes. The mother tells her to uh, encourage her to take uh, uh, the other child, you know, take a, uh, with the cell camera, the video of what's going on. That goes viral. People are talking about that. And this whole immigration, immigrant people are marching for immigration rights and all the rest of that stuff. Okay? So now I'm sitting here in South Africa and I'm going like, wait a second. <laughs> Every country that I've ever been to, including Mexico, you can't just waltz in there and start, you know, you could do an under table job, sure. But if you're discovered, you know, you can be deported. Doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> you know, I could have children in somebody's country, but you know, they still can deport me. The children can stay there, I suppose. So it's kind of strange, but the other thing that's interesting to me, more, more than that, I want to get to the machinations of that, but more than that, is that I've traveled a lot in the world. And i give you uh, this one, one example. Well, two examples, but I, I travel extensively through India, for instance. Now, if you've ever been to India uh, traveling extensively, you'll notice that sometimes they'll have a wedding. These are huge affairs. People are on elephant stairs. I mean, it's just huge. And, and the, the folks there, they have these, I mean, huge palatial estates. Remember, India, talk about oh, um, um, disparities between the rich and the poor. It has the most, I think it has, the, um, maybe they've surpassed, they have, they have the most millionaires, you know, in the world and the most, <laughs> impoverished people in the world. So that thing is anyway. But these Indian but in, when they what they what they would do, you have a family, you have a lot of you have children in the family. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about poor poor people, you know, or the, the so called, you know, untouchables, or whatever. I'm talking about the the the, 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 the rich to do, uh, or the, the middle class to do. They uh, a child, you know, a child might go to uh, some somebody in the family might start a, 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 a motel or something like that in the state. Somebody else will start uh, something else, say a hotel in Uganda. Somebody else will, will go to do some computer things some other place in the world. Now all these people when they're going there, they're sending money back to to the hub of the family, and then they can build these big estates. And when they have a wedding, they can use they can rent these big elephants. They can do all all that stuff uh, because they, their family sends money back to the thing, out of wherever they're, they're coming from. You get where I'm coming from now? So, if you have a country of origin and you're working some other country, yeah, you can pay the taxes and everything like that, but you could also send money back to your, to your, to your country of origin and build your palace, <laughs> if you will, there. And this is the same thing, uh, like for instance, for instance, in Africa, we have what China is in like, it's like we have 54 countries, some stuff is like, trying to something like 52 or the 54, 50 or whatever, a lot, over 50 of these 54 countries, China has a presence. 
And when the Chinese they set up there, they'll they'll come here and set up a shop, you know, and, and just like you know, if you, just like they, uh, at least when I was in Thailand, we do this. But you have a shop in the in the front, or rather on your ground floor. You have then you have your living quarters above that. Well, the Chinese do the same thing. I was living someplace. They they bought the supermarket out and they set up. They lived in the back, not paying you know not paying any rent to someplace else. And you know they run they run their business. That's the way they do. But remember. They have, they have families too, and they send money back to China, you know, enriching the Chinese, taking it away from, um, from, from, from the community. Hey, they spend a little money in the community, but that's all they do. The government sure does the infrastructure, which is, which is fine. Now, the same thing with the Pakistanis. You know, the Pakistanis come, set up shop, and they're always sending money, money home. They might have, some, may have somebody in, in the and the United Arab Emirates there, they might have some somebody uh, working someplace else, else in the world, somebody in the States, somebody in Canada, somebody in Germany, wherever they are, and they're sending money back to to, to, to Pakistan. I'm not talking about the war ravaged areas, I'm talking about more south of Pakistan, closer to India again. Uh, and, and and so you have the situation where where families can go places and and, and you know and, and send back to country. All right. Now here's the thing. Black American men are incarcerated, and they were incarcerated on purpose, on purpose. All kinds of laws and all kinds of situations to put them in jail, some of them for petty, 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 petty things. And that breaks up their family. And now, now we're supposed to, you know, stand up for people uh, who have currencies or countries of origin to send stuff back. Meanwhile, you have black men in jail breaking up families, right, that, and breaking up neighborhoods. And even if you had, well, where are we going to send? Well, it costs money. We have to. We have no jobs in the community, so that you see where how you know. So now people want, and this is kind of interesting. One more thing, I just have to do this. Uh, as you may know from these past things, I, I uh, one of the things I've I've done in my life is uh, I association with WBAI Radio, Pacifica Radio Station, very progressive, blah 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 blah. And uh, periodically we have these workshops all day long, you know. And one workshop we had one day, uh, one, one Saturday, it was um, the morning session was about racism. The afternoon session was about, I think it was about women's issues, and I, I'm almost sure it was like gay issues. I'm not really sure what the two things happened. So we had, the, so we had this whole morning session, then the afternoon. Somewhere in the afternoon section, session, I think the women, they would say something, they'd say, well, just like black people. You know, and we got to 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 to, to the uh, um, uh, homosexual say just like black black people. And somewhere in that thing, I said, "Excuse me, if everything is just like black people, it's like a house of cards. Then can't we solve the racism problem, the black problem first, and then all the other things will just fall into place because they're all, you know, they all they all stem from this whole system of of uh, I didn't say it this way. I'm saying it now: Anglo racist white supremacy." Here's what I'm, let, let me just make it clear. When 9-11 happened, uh, you know, the towers came down in, in the States. Very interesting because Cornel West said something that was so funny. Well, it's funny to me. It, ironic. Let's put it that way. He says, oh, and because then they started demonizing, you know, all the people from the Middle East, you know, the so-called Middle East. Uh, let's call it, it's a, another, another heard of brother say, let's call it West Asia. <laughs> anyway, the, the, they demonized them, and then Cornel West says, Ah, now you know what it feels to be a nigger. Very. You, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm trying to say if you, if you solve the nigger problem, you know, if you solve the black problem, then all these other things falls into place. But first you have to solve the black problem, which means that you have to deal with reparations. You have to deal with the, the, the people that basically through their, through their labor, they built United States of North America. They actually built it after the Europeans came and decimated the Indians. Uh, they took these, you know, black slaves from the Middle Passage, and they built literally over uh, at least a hundred years built the wealth. And as that wealth came that came about, and even when we got free, when we tried to do the things would happen, and they would take, they would still enslave us through Jim Crow, uh, through lynching. Uh, all this, and that lately, since the 90s, in the prison industrial complex. I mean, in the 90s, this really started late in the 90s. So, this guy that, that, that came from Mexico, he has a job because the black people are in jail. So, you see what I'm saying? So, this whole thing, my thing is yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stand up for women. 
yeah, Austin, you, you want me to come and help you with your immigration or, or whatever problem you have. But first, before we get to that, come, you be my troop and you get the brothers out of jail. You get the sisters out of jail. Let's solve the racial problem first. Not the racial, just not even a racial problem. Let's solve this inequities first. Let's do some reparations. Let's get it done so that uh, uh, black people who don't have a country of origin, we have a continent of origin, to send anything back to, to build up so if something happens then we, we can go someplace. This United States of America, I'm not in South Africa, but United States of America, that is our country of origin. Really. It, uh, so, anyway. I'm, 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 I'm just bewildered and so many black people and these black politicians, they jump on a bandwagon, they want to stand up for this and they want to stand up for that, but they're not standing up for their own. No, that's just me talking about me being T from the Pattersons, taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.